Hi, Dr. Raj here. So over the last, I would say, week or so, I mean, the, the word that got out there that shook the whole medical student residency world is, what happened to USMLE step one? It is now going to be pass or fail. So people have been asking, what does it mean for me? And there are so many me's out there. Is it, are we talking about the foreign medical graduate? Are we talking about the US grad, the DO student? There are so many different answers. So what I did was compile what I call my, my pros and cons list. So I've been dying to put this out there. So let's talk about some of the pros, then we'll talk about some of the cons. So when we talk about why this happened to begin with, well, I think the answer is doing some research is all about better student wellness. What I mean by that is that when we talk about step one, needless to say is that it is one of the most stressful tests out there. And it was stressful for even me. And I can imagine when I teach many of my courses, looking at my students, I mean, it is hard. And you know what? There is a big burnout rate. There's a big thing about depression and even, you know, I hate to say it, but it needs to be said, there's even suicides when we talk about medical school and residency and being a doctor. So, you know, when we talk about the main reason why step one went to pass or fail, it was actually putting students, doctors, residents first to say, let's take that stress off of them. And I'm all about wellness and I want people to feel good. So they felt that by making a pass or fail, you're taking away this stress that happens, I mean, let's be honest, early in your medical career. And if that's the case, if this is why it was done, then kudos to them. And I'm always a pro when it comes to mental health. But, you know, I think that when we thought that taking the stress away from step one would be the answer, it's unfortunate that stress will now just be carried over to where? To step two. Because when we talk about step two, that many people when they first took step one and maybe they didn't do as well, they would always get that encouragement that, you know what, one way you can make up for it is now do better get it on the step two exam, which makes perfect sense. And that's what I would tell my students that, hey, you know what, make up for the step two, even the step three. But now if it's pass or fail, the only thing that many people, many residency program directors are gonna look at is that step two. And there is no other comeback. There's no second chance once you actually don't do well on that step two. So it just has a carryover effect when we talk about that anxiety. Another thing that would be kind of a pro beyond better student wellness is going to be it forces residency program directors to account for non-numerical factors, you know. And I believe the big thing is that it's trying to, you know, hit the students or the people who are poor test takers. And who's a poor test taker? I'm sure many of us are. And, you know, it will actually, by getting a poor score in step one, that person was probably going to be a stellar candidate, but they just have poor test taking skills. They simply struggle with standardized testing. So I think that it really is a pro for those individuals who are not good test takers to say that, hey, they still have the chops to be a great, amazing doctor. Uh, number three, when I think about pros, is that, well, I mentioned it already, but now if the step one is just going to be pass or fail, many residency program directors are going to look at what? Step two. And what do I feel about that is that, well, step one is all about the basic science. And when we talk about being a great doctor, being a doctor of the patients, you know, I think that step one doesn't really translate into how we treat patients cl clinically. So I think that better, you know, more reliable indicator of that is step two, because as you all know, it is a clinical test. So I think that's going to be on the pros itself. And in general, the fourth thing that I feel is this is really a big win for one, clinical education in medical schools. You know, I don't think it's wrong when I hear my amazing med students say, is this clinically relevant? How is this going to change patient care? Those students are just way uh, you know, they're already, you know, in the doctor's office. They're thinking ahead of themselves. So I think this is a big win when we talk about clinical education in the medical school. But of course, are there cons? Yes. You know, I don't want to make this video two hours. So I'm going to try to limit what I have to say. But, you know, I think that once again, all that stress associated with step one, you know, better student wellness in making it pass fail, will just transform over to step two. 
And I really do feel that if you did poorly on step one, you're gonna not now have that second chance to do better on step two. So I wanted to say that again. And I think one of the big cons is that, you know, the step one exam will no longer be a way for what I call, lack of a better term, these lower tier candidates for distinguishing themselves. You know, is that this was the test to say that, hey, maybe I didn't get to go to the Harvard, the Stanford, just to give up random, you know, some of these Ivy League schools, you know, uh, but you know what, I did amazing on my step one, and now this will give me a chance to even the playing field. Well, that's taken away now. Number three, it's going to be, well, with the numerical score of step one being nullified, there's going to be a huge shift on other parameters, other factors to decide who's going to be that amazing resident. And where are these going to be? Well, the jury is still out, but in my opinion, I mean, this is going to be letters of recommendation. And once again, this is not going to help out people in the quote lower tier medical schools because they're not going to have the big name faculty people to write letters of recommendations to. You know, it's going to be tough, especially if you're going to be a foreign medical graduate, you know. So I think that's going to be a big shift towards that. And then what about clerkship grades? I think that you're going to have to look at your grades on clerkship. And let's be honest, you know what I mean? There is, you know, a lot of subjectiveness, not objective, subjective, when we talk about letters of recommendation and clerkship grades. So it's not perfect. So there is going to be that shift, whether it's good or bad, I put on my cons list for right now. And I really feel that, you know, when we talk about another big con is fewer objective uh, criteria, kind of adding on to what I just said, it's no longer about the score. It's about things that have many factors to be into it. And it's really going to put a big stress on the residency selection committee to find out what are we going to use. And I kind of thought this one, um, quite a bit. And with the step one becoming pass or fail, that test might become actually harder because now if you're going to pass it, they may set the bar pretty high. Everyone, you know, is just saying, oh, it's pass or fail. Now we'll just think about step two. It might be three times harder to pass step one than you thought it would be because it's now a pass or fail exam. So once again, the jury is going to be out. And the last thing I just really wanted to mention is the fact that um, this is going to be a big loss for one thing, the basic science in medical schools. And this is where it really hits home for me. For those who don't know, I teach physiology for board review courses. And it's one of my, my, my favorite things to do. And one of my favorite things to do is always to integrate. I mean, not that we're going to stop doing these things, but I think with this shift, there's going to be more clinical education. And unfortunately, basic science is going to take a hit. You know, I could go on and on, but truly, you know, the bottom line point over here is that this is a big game changer. And this is one of the biggest shifts in medical education. And I feel residency programs will put a big emphasis on step two CK, letters of recommendation, research as these what I call filtering mechanisms. And this is gonna trigger this cascade of changes in other areas of medical education and residency and even the fellowship application process. And the answer is, I don't know what's going to happen, but only time will tell if this is going to be a positive or negative effect when we talk about patient care and medical education. I hope you find this interesting, me just giving you my opinion. It's still a hot topic. There are still many question marks. And if you want more input or some resources to help out how I think where the paradigm is shifting, going to clinical education, um, go to my website. It's beyondthepearls.net. And I hope this is helpful and good luck to everyone with these changes.